this is going to stay hot the whole time. I can't pull my meter out because there's actually a utility provided meter lock. Um, so I can't disconnect any of that without having a serious find. So I'm just going to do this hot. Today we're going to be taking all of my old Zinsco breakers out of my panel. Um, this is an old outlawed panel, Zinsco, a lot of older brands like Eagle, Federal Pacific, Zinsco, Pushmatic. Um, they're outlawed because they would actually create fires. So a lot of times in here the bus would start to go bad or where the breakers actually um, hooked up to the bus can go bad. It can start creating hot spots and start burning out or there's loose terminations breakers don't actually trip just how they were manufactured back then where the ANSI standards were I'm sorry where the UL standards were uh, it just allowed for a little bit less durability and a less quality assurance let's say uh, for the products so Connecticut Electric actually sent me these these are brand new breakers that are uh, up to today's standards and they're they're made just to be able to replace all of this stuff um, I've checked this panel out. The actual bus is fine. There's nothing wrong with anything in this panel. This house was built in 1968. So uh, this is the original panel for this house. And I've known I need to replace it. Coming up, there's gonna be some videos soon where I do replace the service, uh, rebuild it and kind of show you guys how all that works. But I just wanted to show you uh, replacing all of these things and uh, show you kind of how it works and, and talk through the, the process. This is a 100 amp main. Um, again, there's really nothing wrong with this breaker. A lot of times I would save all of these old breakers Anytime I would uh, work on a system like this or anytime we would take something out, um, I would always save all these breakers because you get that one service call where it's like Saturday night, you know, you can't get new materials for anything, but you need to save or you need to come up with a breaker um, for one of these old legacy panels. So it's nice to just keep a few of them and have them on the back burner as a temporary solution. So you can whip one out, get little old grandma <laughs> on Saturday night. So her power is still on and then you can come back and actually replace it, replace the service, do whatever you got to do, um, which you don't really have to do anymore. I mean, now we have these replacement breakers, uh, so you can just leave these things in. They're actually good. They're uh, guaranteed for 10 years. They have a 10 year warranty on them. Um, so Connecticut Electric really stands behind their products. And these little screws always want to strip out. They're tiny, itty bitty little screws. Um, and they just, they're, it's such weak, soft stuff that you gotta be really careful taking these things out. Unless you're taking them out for good, then you don't really have to worry about it. See, these have a lot more uh, sturdy, um, you know, thicker screws. So how this goes in is this little thing has to hook on the back side here. So it's kind of a, a pain in the butt to snap these in place. These just slide into those grooves. That's pretty obvious. Um, but you got to get this thing in first. So uh, kind of do that and then it just rocks down in place. Um, always make sure that your breakers are off when you go to put a breaker in. Don't leave it in the on condition. If your main is live like mine is, I'm not actually pulling my meter to work on this. So from the meter in, these wires are actually live. I'm a master electrician. I'm not worried about this. I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna be very, very safe when I'm working in here. This isn't something that you wanna do live if you have the choice um, to you know, have the power taken off. That's something you do. But a lot of times we don't have that convenience out in the field. So again, master electrician, I'm taking my own liability. This is my own house and I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna leave this live, this breaker uh, still has live power run into it, but I've killed the bus. So 
when I shut that off, all of the rest of these breakers are now off. So this bus in here is dead. This breaker is not feeding through to the buses. Now I'm just going to work my way up and keep going and I'm going to leave the main to be the last thing. That way I just know uh, working in here that I'm dead the entire way and just leave the hot work till the very last. These are kind of a pain in the butt to pull out too. Like notice what I'm doing. You can't just like yank them out. I take the handle, I kind of grab over here with my hand and I take the handle and start adding pressure to it. These are old. So I don't really care if I break them or anything like that. But then I take this hand over here too and I kind of help push both of them, wiggle them a little bit, and then it pops out. All right, so this is a two pole 30, which means number 10s. Uh, this last one was a two pole 20, which is, should be number 12 wires, it is. So let's take these off. Again, these tiny little screws. Now, some of you may be wondering why is he putting a white wire onto a breaker and it is a white wire but it is not a neutral this is actually a 220 breaker and i'll show you here in a second it's been re-identified as a red now when i'm doing this if i was going to be the one you know installing something like this i would always make sure to put that red tape up here so you can see it clearly as you're looking down like this one is up here um, it's identified right outside of the breaker so you know for sure that it's red. Most people in a panel know what is going on in this situation. But anyways, this is identified as red. I just wanted to make that clear. So again, we kind of have to pull these wires out of the way just to be able to get this back in its place so that it can lock in, snap it in place. We're good to go. Next one. Oh my God. Some of these suck to get out of here. Sometimes you got to pry and be a little, a little less gentle with it. So if you notice, these are two pole 20 breakers, two pole 20 amp, meaning two poles and 20 amps per pole. Um, this is not a 220 circuit. This is actually two 120 volt circuits. It's just that the breaker has two spots. So these can actually be turned on independent of each other. Whereas if it was a 220 load like this, you want to make sure um, that when you flip it, if one of them trips, they both trip because it's serving a 220 load. Uh, in this old system, they didn't do that. They didn't have a breaker tie, but there is a little hole in here where you could stick a breaker tie to make sure that the handles tripped at the same time if you had a 220 load. So just a quick tidbit, little note for you. Now this one has a lot of conductors sticking out of the back side, plus the, uh, the conductor itself is pretty smashed. So I'm just gonna cut that off, cut this guy off as well. I don't want that much conductor showing. See, that's better. You don't have any conductor sticking out of the back of the breaker. I think that's pretty darn important. Now we're gonna get into this live conductor. So uh, what I'm gonna do is put some PPE on. This is going to stay hot the whole time. I can't pull my meter out because there's actually a utility provided meter lock. Um, so I can't disconnect any of that without having a serious fine. So I'm just going to do this hot. Now, I don't recommend anybody out there does hot work ever. Really, there's never a, a reason 
justified or good enough to do hot work if you can avoid it. Now there are certain circumstances. I've done enough industrial and commercial service work to know that when there's like a $10 million production line going, you just have to keep power on. You can't just shut millions of dollars worth of production down or, you know, like kill all of the cash registers in the middle of like a, you know, dinner rush or some kind of thing like that. Like there's just situations that arise where you need to be able to work on power live. There's plenty of personal protection gear out there. They make flash suits, they make, um, you know, face masks, they make hot gloves, they make boots, they make all kinds of like rubber mats. So there is equipment out there that is designed for people to do live work. So the whole argument that you should never do work live or that you, it's okay, like you stop being a wuss, like you can do, you know, like neither of those narratives are responsible. I think the best way to think about the situation is always minimize risk. As electricians, we deal with, this is dangerous stuff, like by far the one of the most dangerous trades uh, in construction. We need to minimize risk. As a general rule of thumb, to be a good quality electrician, to know what you're doing, to be effective and safe, and to go home to your family and make sure all of your guys go home to their family and girls go home to their families at the end of the night, it's your responsibility to minimize risk at all times. So the best thing to do is to never work on stuff live when you don't have to. But if you have to, use proper PPE, slow down, take your time, train people well so that they know what they're getting into. I'll do some safety videos so maybe you guys can come across some safety tips, but I am a master electrician. This is my house. This is my liability. I feel comfortable doing this because I've done hot work so much throughout my career on multiple voltage systems, medium voltage stuff, you know, 480 volt live. I've worn flash suits all the whole nine yards. So I know how to handle this situation. So all of that to say, you're going to see me do live work with PPE on and a flash helmet. This is something that I'm doing to protect myself because I just want to minimize the risk. This is not how you have to do it. This is just how I'm choosing to do it. But I am going to do this live because there is no breaker that's going to shut this off. If this thing arcs, it's going to be a crazy arc, big explosion, and still no breaker is going to trip. So it's just going to be live in my hands. If any of you have never worn hot gloves before, these are um, these are called leather protectors. The outside, just a regular glove that's made out of leather. And these are the actual gloves. They're rated at a bunch of different ratings. This is a thousand volt rated, class zero, size ten. Um, but you should always keep a pair of hot gloves on you, just in case. You know, just in case you ever run into a situation where you need to. All right, so my breaker is off. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect one conductor. Alright, that is a live conductor. And what I'm going to do so it's not just sitting there and, you know, I forget and like bump my arm into it and shock myself and I'm actually going to put the other breaker on this wire right now. This wire is hot. And it's funny, like we say that this, it has potential on it, right? This has 120 degree or 120 volts of potential to ground or to neutral. It's not hot. <laughs> you know, just the idea that it's a hot wire uh, is a funny, you know, funny way of communicating. You notice that I'm touching it. There's no problem with this at all. I've got these gloves. They're highly insulated. No current's going to go through it. Plus, I'm only touching this with one hand. I'm not touching this and something metal. I could because I have these gloves on. It's not going to go through me. Um, but you're just when people think they're going to get shocked by touching a wire, um, I can even touch this with my, my regular skin and uh, not get shocked because I'm not grounded. I'm not touching anything else. But I'm not going to do that for this video because I don't. <laughs> I don't want anybody to misunderstand and just start touching hot wires, so I'm not going to show you an example of that. So first off, let's get these guys loosened. There are some little rubber pieces in here.
You see that? There's little rubber pieces in there. That's kind of weird. I don't know why they do that. All right, so that was my top conductor, so I'm gonna make sure that I put it on my top conductor here. Remember, this is a live conductor, which now means this and this piece of metal are live. And the breaker is in off position, I made sure of that. But if it wasn't, if it was in the on position, this would also be connected. So this would be live, this would be live, and this would be live. So you want to make sure it's off. So again, you're just minimizing you this one thing that is live. So this is the safest way we can do this right now. I've got one conductor taken care of. It's uh, less chance that anything's going to shock me or surprise me. And I'm just going to leave this thing hang down there for right now. Now I'm going to deal with my second conductor. Loosen it up. I'm going to put a hand on it just so it doesn't spring out. All right. Got that loose. Alright, now just again minimizing risk, I want to put this right back into something so that I make sure I don't shock myself. And now that it is in the breaker, I actually feel a whole lot better that uh, when I go to handle this thing, uh, I know exactly where to touch it and I'm not worried about wires flopping off anywhere. Now I can get this really crazy difficult breaker out. Um, I tried removing this earlier with the, the wires in it, and this thing is just so cinched in there. That with live conductors on it, I just didn't want to risk anything bouncing around and you know, flopping off. See, that was kind of difficult. And if those wires were loose in there, they probably would have went boom, you know, and like hit something. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Now I'm gonna very carefully with these live conductors breaker in the off position. Always, always put in a breaker in the off position. I'm going to bend these out of the way a little bit. Again, i got to get that hook in this thing so that'll slap down. Another reason that you want to make sure that you um, have the breaker in the off position is because if you go to put this in, it's going to start parking and making sure all of these are off too. You don't want like random loads throughout the house, the house turning on and frying because you keep arcing and uh, creating a, a situation where you're going to destroy uh, any loads. All right, so I've got that hooked in. She does not want to sit very well in there. Oh, come on, baby. is another reason you want to have PPE on when you're doing this stuff because I'm working on live conductors right now and it's not going how I want it's not acting right let me just make sure that there's nothing back there that's causing it to happen pain in the butt I don't see any reason why it would not be going in. These pieces of metal, you know, are kind of thick, but like they're pretty much the same size as all of it. You know what? This bus over here actually looks like it's a little damaged. Check this out. That bus where it connects actually looks like it's got some damage on it. It looks like maybe there was some arcing. Somebody, uh, uh, somebody maybe you know like shorted something out in there. Got all that black charring on the one on the left. That's not good. Which for now is okay because I'm going to be replacing this whole service in the next few weeks. So for now, this is just going to have to do. But that's what you're. That's the kind of stuff that you're looking for. Um, the problems with this. So the fact that I gotta hammer this thing in there because my bus is messed up, um, I didn't see that before. I didn't notice that. So that's a, a really good thing to know.
And you should not have to hit a breaker that damn hard to get to go in. But we got it all in. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my main back on. You know, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my multimeter out, and I just want to check and take this thing off. Now that I'm done working with that, take my hot gloves off. Done working with that. All right, so now we're going to get our trusty multimeter out. Um, I want to test, just make sure that there's nothing crazy going on. Uh, this is my trusty T5. Love this thing, T5-600 uh, from Fluke. So what I'm going to test for is I'm going to go to each one of these, make sure that there is no weird uh, short. I've got 249 volts, so I'm on my voltage setting. I got a good 240 in, then I'm going to go uh, from one phase down to neutral, shows 125. Next phase down to neutral, 125. My neutrals and grounds are bonded. So it looks like we have a good voltage reading. Um, I, I feel comfortable um, that everything's hooked up correctly. So now I'm going to energize my main. All right, good to go. We should on our bus get a voltage reading 249. We're good to go there. We still got 120 from each phase to neutral and ground. So we're good. Now I feel comfortable turning on individual loads. Boom, 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 boom. All right, everything's holding. Handles are a little loose and wiggly, but that's okay. Tap on them, nothing's gonna fly back. It means they're all holding like they should. And let's see how much current we've got. Uh, so I'm gonna switch over to amps. I'm gonna use this jaw and clamp on each one of my main service entrance conductors. You can see on that one that we've got 2.8 amps on my B phase. On my A phase, it's kind of hard to read. We got 3.9 amps. So, uh, not a lot on right now. It's probably because we just shut everything off. So uh, everything's starting to come back online. Now, one thing I do need to do is this knockout. You know, we need to put a, a knockout seal in that and make sure that it's sealed so nobody can get their fingers up inside of it. I'm not gonna worry about that. Again, I'm actually gonna be replacing this service here in the next couple of weeks, especially since I found that the, that uh, bad spot in that bus. Um, just taking this whole thing out and I'm gonna replace it later. But it's really nice to know that we have breakers that are brand new certified. Um, they come with a warranty. They're protected for 10 years. They're not old and worn and decrepit. You know, it's something that was actually created uh, recently. And you can find these at Home Depot, a lot of your different supply houses, but um, you can walk into Home Depot and they're actually on the shelf. Um, not even just for Zinsco, but there's Pushmatic, there's uh, Challenger, um, Federal Pacific, there's a lot of other stuff that they have. So it's really just cool to know that if there is a problem, you can really quickly just go off the shelf, grab a replacement breaker for these old systems, instead of being like, oh crap, I wish I would have saved some breakers on the last service that I just replaced. Uh, because you don't want to be using that old stuff. That old stuff has not been classified under the UL listings. It hasn't been updated. It hasn't been freshly made and tested. You want to be using something that is brand new that's still off the shelf. So um, that's all I got for you.